In this video, I will go over another piece of important information in indexing planes with Miller indices. This idea is known as the family of planes. This is a type of notation that is commonly used. In the previous videos, we saw how we could index the faces of this cubic crystal. We saw that this face is the 100 face or 100 plane. And we saw how this face can be called the 001 plane. And we looked at every single other plane in the, the cube as well, on the faces at least. We didn't do every plane, but we did all the planes on the faces. And if you look closely at this, if I was to take this cube and around the y-axis, if I was to rotate by 90 degrees, I would move the 100 face into the position of the 001 face. I would overlay them. And if it's possible, just by turning our cube, by rotating it, to overlay the two different planes, in this case the 100 and the 001 plane, we say that they are member of the same family of planes. And there's an effective way of notating this. We write families of planes in curly brackets. So a specific plane is written in parentheses and a family of planes is written in curly brackets. We can actually rotate the 100 plane to any of the other faces and completely overlay them. So we say that all of the faces of this cube are a member of the 100 family of planes. And we would write that in curly brackets. Most of the time, when we say the 100 face, we are actually referring to this, to the family of 100 planes. In many cases, the 100, pl the 100 plane will be the exact same structure as the other planes here. In this case, like I'm just pointed to the back plane, which would be the one bar O plane. In most cases, these would be identical. And in the real world, we wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So it's sufficient to just refer to the family of planes. And it's also a little bit easier to roll off the tongue to say 100 instead of 001 bar or 01 bar O, things like that. So most of the time we're going to look at families of planes. I'll show you one more example in this video of families of planes. This is going to be a particularly common example. And that is of the 100 plane. This is a very important plane in many crystals. A lot of the interesting action in a crystal often happens in the 111 plane. So it's a good example. We saw in previous videos, we went through this discussion of why this is the 111 plane. I can also draw another plane here. I'll draw in violet. And I'll try and shade this in to give you a sense for where this plane is in space. 
one of the things that takes time to get good at in crystallography is seeing where these planes really are. So this plane intersects the y-axis at 1, the z-axis at 1, and if I was to change my coordinates to using this system, the plane intersects the x-axis at minus 1. So this plane is the 1 bar 1 1 plane. And if what I just did there doesn't make sense, I encourage you to go back and watch the previous videos where I go through several examples on how to index a plane. And these two planes are also a member of the same family of planes. This transformation is a little bit more difficult. I think you would have to flip the cube over and then rotate it around the, let me see. You would have to rotate it around the z-axis and you could overlay these two planes. So we say that these two planes are the 1-1-1 family of planes. And I could do this for other planes. I could draw this plane in here. And this plane would also be a member of the same family of 1-1-1 planes. And you can see how some of these planes are somewhat difficult to index. This 1 bar 1 1 plane is not nearly as quick as indexing the 1 1 1 plane. It's much easier to simply refer to the 1 1 1 family of planes. In the next video, we are going to look at some examples of crystal directions. At this point, we are pretty good of saying where we are in a crystal. In the next video, we're going to see where we are going. I hope to see you there.